we came across this story first in 2014, it was about four years ago, and we had just finished up our first documentary, The Battered Bastards of Baseball, and we had worked with a film archive up in the Pacific Northwest, and one of their archivists told us that he had over 300 hours of archive footage that had never been seen before or transferred on kind of what was the craziest story that ever happened in the state of Oregon which was uh, the story of Roshnish Purim. I mean, honestly, when he first kind of told us about the story, he told us like everything that was involved about how the followers of this Indian guru, they buy a 64,000 acre ranch and they spend about $120 million turning it into like a utopian city. And then he just kind of starts talking about how they just, it, a war broke out between them and local ranchers and it dominated the local Oregon news media from 1981 to 1985. And when he was telling us like everything that happened, they busted homeless people, there were poisonings, there was these guns, there was violence. I mean, I almost thought like, I'm not sure if he has this story, right? But then when we dove in, we just found this like a, 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 an American saga almost. It was like an epic that happened out in Oregon and it's largely forgotten, but when we started transferring the archive footage and it started coming back to us, we just thought like, God, it'd be great to tell this in like a long form episodic series, documentary series. And that's when we kind of partnered up with Netflix to do it. The whole kind of uh, team is really like a family team. Um, our incredible producer, Juliana Lundy, is also uh, my wife and our older brother Brocker does the music. And so kind of the four of us have been working on this for the last couple years. And um, Mac as my brother, uh, we've worked together a couple times, and I think that, um, I don't know, we share a very similar aesthetic, I think we're interested in the same things politically, uh, intellectually, we like the same art, and so. Yeah, and I think just, like, practically too, we, we knew we wanted to do this in the long form way, and there was just so much work to be done, I mean, the amount of archive footage that we had was around 300 hours, and we shot about 100 hours of interviews ourselves with a, with a, with a lot of characters, so. There's moments when you like collaborate together and those are awesome, but there's also a lot of moments when it's like, you do this and I'll do this and we'll team up together and we'll try and get it done in time. Basically it deals with an outside group, the other that moves into a new town and uh, is viewed through the prism of the other. And it's a, a spiritual religious group that you know this town isn't familiar with um, and it raises a lot of questions of, you know, who's, who should, what, what religion should be allowed in this town, who should be allowed to live here. And I think kind of interesting enough is that you can't really view this story through today's political lens because a lot of the politics are inverted in kind of a very interesting way where you have a uh, conservative Christian town that's trying to limit freedom of religion and what this spiritual group can do. And then on the other side, you have a spiritual group that takes up the Second Amendment, um, you know, buys AK-47s and guns and arms up. And so, in an interesting way, I don't think you can really apply the left-right divide that we have today um, with this story. Yeah, I think we, like, wanted to challenge viewers to try and really figure out exactly how they feel about the story. And so, you get two vastly different per perceptions of the same story, essentially. You get townsfolk who live next to this new group that came into town, and you get the followers of the, 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 the Indian guru himself. And so, um, I think we wanted to make it as entertaining and as fun and exhilarating as possible, and I think that we've done that. But also, we didn't want to make it too easy for the audience to have to figure out who's right and who's wrong in this situation. I think that's kind of, it's kind of up for them to decide.